So today we are going to be talking about Fruits Basket, specifically the first three collector's edition volumes, which I think translates to the first six volumes of Fruits Basket. That's how far I am so far. So I'm going to be discussing with spoilers the first section of this series. I have not read it all yet. Look how pretty. So for co some context for me, I'm a relatively new manga reader. I primarily read novels and I've recently gotten into the form of manga and I've been loving it, but my experience is still small. And on top of that, this is my first shoujo manga. So I'm real new to this type of uh, manga. I don't have spoilers. I actually started this manga not even knowing the basic plot line. I'm, I literally learned about this curse along with Toru. I knew nothing. So please don't spoil me. So my experience did start off a little bit rocky. The art style I was not a big fan of. I'm still not completely won over by the art style if I'm just being transparent with you. The giant eyes are not my thing and the chaotic paneling, it's, I'm just not used to it. I'm, it's not the type of manga that I'm used to. I'm doing my best to get adjusted though. I love the concept. However, there are definitely some things that have, that are not landing for me. So like, it just kind of depends on what chapter I'm in. Some chapters I'm on the edge of my seat, can't get it enough, fully immersed, adoring it. And then some chapters just aren't working for me, uh, whether it be because of some storytelling choices or some humor that just it does not jive with me at all. I've been kind of mixed, but, but overall positive. But it was when I got to volume three, especially when I finished volume three, that I became wholly committed. And in fact, I finished volume three last night. And as I sit down to record this, it's really challenging for me to not just blow through the rest of the series. I will not do that because I have other reading commitments, but I, I will probably be reading through this very quickly. So I am fully committed right now. And now that we've had just the longest intro ever, let's actually talk about the series. Let's dig into uh, what's going on here. I have not watched the anime. I watched the first two episodes and I've been planning to continue on with it, but I'm a bad TV watcher, so I've done a poor job. So if I get some pronunciations wrong, please forgive me. I'm gonna do my best to do okay at it. But we're gonna start off by talking about our lead character, Toru Honda. I love how selfless she is. I love how kind she is. I love how much she thinks of everyone else around her. I love how giving she is and I love how, how hard she works to be strong for herself and for everybody in her path. Between living in a tent so that she's not a burden on anyone while her house is being remodeled, working to exhaustion to pay her school tuition so that she's not a burden, and happily doing chores for the family, and even when a little kid is following her around, she takes her under her wing and happily embraces her. But beneath all this, she's still allowing herself to process her mom's death in her own way by taking her mom's picture places and talking with her and allowing herself time to mourn. There's a line when we're hanging out with her friends and I feel like they really sum up who she is very well. They say, instead of wishing for all kinds of things, she treasures what she has right now right here. And I really think that that summarizes who she is a lot. She has a lot of struggles. She has a lot of stuff that she's going through, but what's important to her is loving people well and being grateful for what she does have instead of wishing for more or wishing for something different. And I think that that's a really incredible quality and something that I want to be more like and really try to, uh, I try to be a lot like what Toru uh, models in, in this manga. She's just a very selfless giving person and, and I really enjoy hanging out with her. And I like that it's not just push down your emotions, push down the things that you're feeling, just be grateful, don't complain, don't whine, just be happy. It's, it's, not, it's not like she's denying herself the ability to feel deep emotions and she just has to be chipper all the time. Although there is a component of that where she doesn't want people to see her mourning, but she still allows herself to feel. She still allows herself to take moments in the day to process with her mom or to cry over the fact that she just really misses her. All that said, she's also very naive and doe-eyed and at times quite ditzy and that can get a little bit old. It does great on me every now and then because I just want her to like, just, 
I don't know. She's just, you, characters have to have their faults and, the, and that's hers. But there's definitely a lot more positive to her than there is negative. Also, her, naive, her naivete, her ditziness uh, does play into humor, sometimes in ways that I don't like, sometimes in ways that I do. Like the first time that she sees a transformation of the boys and she freaks out, she wants to take him to the hospital. She thinks that she did this to them somehow. It's hilarious, I love it. So in the beginning of this whole thing, we are introduced to the three Shoma boys that she is going to initially be living with. But over the course of time, she lives with basically everybody because <laughs> they take in like anybody that needs a break from their family, anybody that needs a place to stay for the night, anybody that bursts through their door and breaks into their home and says, I'm aggressively staying here now. It's like, sure, there's a room for you, which is very kind. It's. There's, there's a lot of generosity, not just with Taru, but with uh, everybody. Them taking her in and then anyone that just needs a place to crash, they're like, yep, you can stay here too. So one thing that I think that this manga is doing spectacularly is characterization really, really quickly. I think very early on, I'm getting a feel for how, what each character's individual personalities are in their body language, in the way they talk, in the way that they interact with other people. You get to see what's on the surface very quickly, like Yuki being very reserved and stoic and Kyo being very uh, hot-headed yet very sweet underneath that surface. And then you get to go deeper with them very quickly as well, seeing uh, that a big part of what affects their personality and those traits is one, the spirit that is kind of possessing them, the spirit that's on them, that's part of their life that affects things. But then also the trauma that they've been through is a big factor and their flaws are right there on the surface, right there up front. But at the same time, you get to see past those flaws into what is at the core of them, which makes it so easy to love them really hard. I feel, I feel like I am so attached to these characters. I love them as if I'm actually interacting with them, which is awesome. I love a good character focused, really deep character center story. And so you get to see more depth with these characters right up front, but then you also get teased of a lot more depth to come. Like for instance, with Kyo and uh, Yuki's rivalry from the beginning, it's like, oh yeah, the cat and the rat with the original myth, there's a rivalry there already, but there's also a lot of hints that there's a lot going on beneath the surface that I have not even begun to see yet. And that's true with all of the characters in just anything about them. They all have a lot going on that gets teased that is slowly being poured out to you. But anyway, I said I was going to talk about these characters and these two, Yuki and Kyo, seem to be the main two aside from Toru, to Toru that we are following and really zeroed in on. And I love how distinctly different yet distinctly lovable they are. Yuki, who shows his affection for Toru by being open and smiling and openly flirting with her, while Kyo shows it by being there for her when she needs him, but then he pushes her away whenever they start to have a moment and he gets uncomfortable. Yuki's stoic demeanor that gets softened whenever he's around Toru, and Kyo's anger that controls him sometimes, but he's breaking through that, he's breaking past that and softening when he's around her too. And they're both so protective over her, and they show it in completely different ways. Like when they realize that she spent all her money making making them chocolates and Kyo agreed to go to the spa with her, or how furious Yuki was whenever he realized that his brother was being a creep. They're really being moved and changed by her and pushing past those flaws and those boundaries and those walls that they've put up. But also Honda has lost so much and she tries to be strong for everyone. And now she's feeling like she's found a family and a home here with them. I also really love the physical chemistry written into this story, the way that the characters physically interact with each other, different characters responding to the same scenario in completely different ways because of their distinct personalities. The, the, the way that they physically interact with each other and with the world is also very unique to their personalities. And that's another thing that I love about the storytelling and, and about these characters is that, again, everything they do, the way they speak, the way their faces are, 
the way they move is all unique to their individual personalities, which I love seeing on the page. I love studying that physical chemistry of them with the world and with each other. Like how they have very different physical reactions to Toru. Like how Kyo leans away when she leans into him, but when it's Yuki and her, he's the one leaning in. Or their physical responses to her when things get awkward, like how Kyo pushes her away and Yuki draws closer. Or when they wanted to ask her to continue living with them after she tried to move back with her family. Again, Yuki drew closer and invited her to come with them and Kyo just grabbed her and pulled her out of the house. But while they both respond to her in completely different ways and totally unique ways for them, they both care about her so much. And I really love seeing their personalities on display in these ways and how they're completely different and in a lot of times complete opposites to each other, yet the way that they care for her and the way that they care for their family and the way they interact with the world is so clear and so endearing. Now that I've talked about the main three, or at least for the volumes that I've read, the main three, as far as I can tell, some side characters. There are a lot. Starting with Honda's friends, because they care about her so much, from defending her uh, at school when people are mean to her and being really protective over her whenever the uh, whenever she, they find out that Honda, when I, I'm saying Honda again, when they find out that Toru is uh, living with, the, with this family and they're like, um, we're gonna need to meet them and we're gonna need to decide if this is acceptable. And it's because they understand her. They know they know who she is, they know how much she gives, and they, they see how much value is in her, and they don't want anyone in her life that's going to take advantage of that or devalue that, and I love that. Strong female friendships is something that I really just don't read that much, unfortunately, and when it does come up in, in this way, in this really strong way, it's just, it's so satisfying to read. There are a lot of side characters to keep track of in this series, and I haven't even met all the characters yet, all of the Zodiacs yet. Oh my goodness, it's quite overwhelming actually. So I'm not gonna go over them all because even a lot of them I've just had very quick introductions with and I haven't gone deep with them yet. I expect I will be going deep with every single one of the Zodiacs. I imagine they all have their own trauma because oh my goodness, I've already found so much. But some of my favorites, not talking about everybody based off of an introduction level, because I there's a lot that I don't know very well, but just on these initial introductions that I've had in these few volumes that I've read, my favorites so far are Momoji, if I'm saying his name right, I hope, who initially, his his initial introduction and the first couple scenes I got with him, I actually didn't like him that much because of how childlike he was despite being a year younger than them and how ba boundaries, man, boundaries in this series. He didn't have any, just like nobody seems to. But after I got his backstory, I was completely won over by him and I have already talked too much about that. Uh, in a reading vlog, if you'd like to see it, I will link it in the description, but I went on for a long time about his backstory and how much depth it added to him and how it completely now to me makes sense that he's clinging to his childhood and not maturing, developing mentally at a rate that I would expect him to based off of his trauma. I'll leave all that there. Also Kisa, again, I don't know that I'm saying her name right, Kisa, who I've only just met, I love and want everything good in the world for her. And also Hana and her brother. I love them. I love this like very dark, moody, weird archetype character. And now with the added dynamics of her brother, I love it all. It all makes me happy. I mentioned this several times, but I'll, I guess I'll dig into it a little bit more here. The relationship dynamics of this series are weird to me and I don't actually know what to do with it or how to process it all. Not process. I don't, I don't know if I'm interpreting it all right or what I'm supposed to, what kind of expectations I'm supposed to have for this series moving forward based off of the way a lot of these characters are introduced. I've mentioned it several times but boundaries in this series are basically just not there. People have very invasive introductions and invasive ways of interacting with Toru, who I understand that they're very interested in her as being an outsider who is now in on their secret and they wanna to get to know her and they're, they're like very drawn to her, I get that, but they're also really, boundaryless and aggressive with each other. And I just, and everybody seems interested in everybody and I don't exactly know what is happening here. I mentioned in a reading vlog, maybe are we gonna do like a love hexagon? Like what is happening? And I can't tell if I'm like 
if I'm interpreting everybody's intentions correctly, but I did mention this, like I said, in a reading vlog, and several people have commented saying that in this series, people have very strong and sometimes aggressive introductions because it's such a big cast that's being thrown at you very quickly, and it gets toned down. People's interactions with each other, people's lack of boundaries with one another gets toned down as the series progresses and as we get deeper into the characters. So I still don't actually know what to expect. Like I said, I went into this completely spoiler-free. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I think we're, I think Kyo and Yuki are the only two real love interest for um, Toru. But frankly, it could go in any which direction with the way these characters are acting toward each other. And they obviously also have feelings for each other within this Shoma family, within the Zodiac stuff. So I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. But people are promising me that as far as like who, th what the ships are, that's all going to be, it's, a, it's all gonna be explained better. It's all gonna even out and be a little bit less like of a tangled web. So, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. I told you I'm new to this genre. So like, I don't know how to interpret things all the time. Anyway, now let's talk about trauma because boy, do we have a lot of that. I'm not gonna dig in deep on any of these just because for a lot of these, I've only been teased and I teased on them and I expect we're gonna go a lot deeper on a lot of them. But we have Honda's backstory with her mom and with uh, the fruits basket game and you know the bullying being rejected and just generally her family doesn't seem to treat her very well except for her grandpa who I, just, just in general, she's got a lot going on. The doctor and his backstory of the curse negatively affecting someone that he loves and then them forgetting him. Momoji's backstory of his mom completely rejecting him and her greatest regret in life being giving birth to him and her choosing to forget and Momoji just wanting to help her by allowing her to forget him. Kisa being bullied at school and just wanting her mom to tell her it's all right and to not be ashamed of her. And Kyo, whose mom loves him, but he has to pretend a part of him doesn't exist. He has to keep it shut away and he is loved up to the point of that part of him. And Toru, who sees that part of him and loves him still, who sees that part of him and doesn't reject that side, but loves him despite it, she sees it and she loves him completely. Oh, and we've also been teased on Yuki's trauma of being locked in a cage by the head of the household. I don't even, what is going on? But we haven't even begun to dig into that one. I'm sure it's also going to be a doozy. But they've all been bullied. They've all experienced some level of trauma and are trying to work through it. And now that Toru is in their life and is doing her best to learn to love selflessly and love wholly, it's changing them and it's affecting them. And thankfully also her relationship with them is changing her as well. I really don't know how deep we're going to go into Honda's character, I, Toru's character, as far as her selflessness. I don't know if this is just gonna be like a great quality about her that she works at and everybody, everybody gets something from knowing her or if we're going to reach a breaking point with her where she can't keep giving anymore or where uh, she has to confront her trauma head on as well. I'm not really sure what to expect out of her character. I really hope that we're gonna have kind of a breaking point scene for her as well. Uh, but even if we don't, I'm really, really happy with her character and I'm enjoying watching these characters struggle with what life has thrown at them and figure out how to confront it and move forward. I actually, I ended this section, the the volume that I that I stopped at to do this review, I ended where Kyo's teacher comes in and forces him to show his true form and, and to see if he would be rejected by Toru. And then he leaves without saying goodbye and Kyo chases after him and, and confronts him and says, uh, he says, I hope to some they become the type of person that is worthy of calling you dad. And I loved getting the scene directly after confronting the fact that his mom wouldn't fully accept him and then Honda uh, Toru fully accepting him. And then, and then he says, I hope that I'll become worthy of being able to call you dad. And his re response was to call him his high maintenance son. That whole 
acceptance, that full acceptance from a parental figure to him now. Ah, oh, I loved that scene, as well as just getting the, the depth in him very briefly of how his dad used to be possessed by the cat spirit and he rejected, not his dad, sorry, his granddad being possessed by the cat spirit and him fully rejecting his grandpa because of it and his grandpa's love and selflessness despite that rejection and him learning from that and then from there choosing to love selflessly to Kyo and I just ah I don't know I'm still really early on in the series I feel like everything I'm at is still very set up but as far as I can interpret it so far, it looks like we're really going to be digging deep into some themes that I'm very, very excited to explore. And you can see how much that whole acceptance from a parental figure really affects him, how much it means to him. Like I said, there's still tons of things that are just being teased that aren't even set up, like the trauma that they've been through and like what secrets they're still holding on to and who the hat boy is, is it Kyo? Is it Yuki? I don't know, but somebody at some point gave Honda, gave Toru a hat and I, who is it? I don't know. Anyway, this has been long. I am fully committed to this series. I'm definitely going to be finishing it. I'll probably be honestly going through it pretty quickly because I'm officially hooked. There's still some things that I don't like about it. There's still some humor that just like is not me. It's not, it's not my humor. But the core of the story I'm loving so much. The characters I am loving so much. And I'm excited to see more. I'm excited to keep exploring the characters, what they've been through, what their journey is going to look like, and the themes that are going to be discussed here. I don't know what the interest level is for this series for my channel since I've been focused on very different types of series up to this point. So I'm just going to see how this video does. I'm going to see what the interest level is for me talking about this series because I could potentially break me discussing this video and digging deep, uh, not this video, discussing the series and digging deep into it for an additional three videos. But if the interest level isn't high, then I'll just read through the rest of the series and then make one more video where I discuss it. Either way, I'm committed and I will continue discussing it, whether in parts or just you know one more video. Oh, and if you wanna know what my ship is, I'm definitely Team Kyo at this point though it looks more like Yuki is gonna be end game. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the first three collector's edition volumes of Fruits Basket. I can't wait to keep going. I'm really, really loving it. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the other channel, which will also be linked in the description. That's the vlogs, so you can follow me weekly as I'm reading through it and discuss it with me weekly if you want to. Totally should. I'll see you again soon. Bye.